Hi, academics. By now, you probably have taught online in some capacity. And you probably realize by now that the way you normally teach your lessons is not quite the same when doing it online, isn't it? Awkward silences, your mic is not working, recording's not working, your neighbor is shouting at the next door. I mean, the list of problems can be endless. So I'd like to take this video to share 10 good practices that hopefully can help you out for your courses. Let's go. Number one, make course adjustments. Run through your syllabus and see if they all fit an online delivery medium. If not, make adjustments to your course contents. This can be as simple as changing your PowerPoint designs or changing assessment methods. Do make sure you obtain the necessary approval before making key changes. Number two, familiarize yourself with the delivery platform. Institutions deploy different interfaces, Zoom, Skype, Microsoft Team, and in the case of PSB Academy, Blackboard. Whilst most video conferencing functionality are similar, they might differ in the way you operate the little things like adjusting the mic settings, changing the role of an attendee to a moderator. Take time to familiarize yourself so you will not end up looking clueless when going live. Number three, the audio matters more. Now, most of us will probably think that what matters most in a, is a good camera, right? Right? Wrong. Audio clarity is far more important element to get right. I mean, think about it. We usually can tolerate moderate video quality if the audio is good, but we can never tolerate poor audio no matter how good the video is. Most laptops will have audio and video capabilities built in, but in general, the quality is rather poor. This can be concerning if your work will live online for a very long time. So if you have a little bit of extra money, invest on an external mic, or ask if you can borrow one from the management. You can also use the mic-equipped earphones that come with your phone. This is still miles better than your laptop mic. And overall, it will boost your audio quality considerably when students are listening or playing back the recording. A quick note on webcams, the quality will generally be bad if you're not well lit. So just park yourself in a well lit area, preferably in front of a window, and you'll be fine. Number four, prepare your teaching materials early. Nothing is worse than fiddling around your file system in your computer, searching for notes to show your students once you are already live. This will waste time and risk losing engagement from students. Prepare your notes and upload them ahead of time where possible. This only requires you to be at your laptop 15 to 20 minutes earlier before the start of session. Number five, mind your setting. Just because you're teaching at home does not mean that your kids or your shirtless uncle should be seen or heard playing in the background. Nobody wants to see that. Observe the same professionalism as you would teaching in a physical classroom. Take your usual morning shower, get dressed in your usual teaching attire, mind your background when setting up the camera, and observe your posture. Now that you're all ready to start teaching, here's what you should do during your actual lessons. Number six, encourage everyone to turn on the camera. The introvert in us would typically prefer not to share the video feed from our webcam. But by encouraging yourself and students to turn on the camera, it will likely increase engagement during the session just by being seen. It also avoids casually anyone walking off the session whilst they are still online. Number seven, don't do all the hard work. Running a three hour session in a physical classroom is not the same as a three hour online session. Yours truly will be the first to admit that. But that does not mean that you have to keep talking for 180 minutes. Blackboard and other systems likely have things like polls, surveys, breakout groups, and the whiteboard. They are all good tools to encourage your students to take over the session after your lecture is complete. Third-party softwares like Mentimeter and Kahoot can be great tools when teaching online. So let them do some of the heavy lifting. These tools are made for you, so do use them to further aid students to remember and apply what was taught during the lesson. Number eight, stretch. One of the downsides to online delivery is that we are pretty much stuck on our desk the whole time. That's not exactly a very healthy way to work, especially when you're at home all day and the fridge is so close. So it would be good to include a few breaks for you and your students to stretch out every now and then so that everyone is not completely dormant during the lesson. In the end, your belly will thank you for it. Number nine, after lessons, schedule consultations as and when necessary. Students often request that you check on their work progress or to clarify uncertainties regarding the course. Avail yourself to them as much as possible for online support. 
Whether it's an email or a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session, a little bit goes a long way in assuring students that they are on the right track. And last but certainly not least, number 10, be accessible. The effectiveness of online delivery hinges upon your accessibility towards your students. Now, this does not mean that you should give them your personal contact and be on call 24-7. But think of a way that students can reach out to you for a quick answer. If you check and reply your emails very often, great. But if not, creating group chats on Telegram or other chat rooms might work as well. So there you go. 10 good practices or tips that you can use to improve your online delivery sessions. Remember that at the end of the day, none of us are perfect, but by making these conscious steps to improve, you'll be an expert in no time. Thank you, and thanks for watching.